The Oscars continue to generate controversy. We've got the breakdown on the biggest Hollywood deals of the week. Britney has a new book. Wendy Williams is saying goodbye. And Tom Holland continues to dominate the box office. It's all happening right now on The Take. Welcome to The Take. I'm Elizabeth Wagmeister. And I'm Clayton Davis, and we're here to give you our take on some of the week's biggest stories. It's been a big week with deals, with movies opening, and the Oscars. Yes, and it seems like we can't talk about the Oscars without talking about controversy, so please bring us up to speed. The Oscars have stepped into it again. We have just learned that eight of the 23 categories will not be telecast live during the ceremony that takes place on March 27th. Details are still emerging, but what we do know is that the ceremony will take place one hour earlier for in-person attendees where these eight categories will be announced while A-list stars remain on the red carpet to get their photos taken and complete their interviews with journalists. It was met with a backlash from editors, composers, artisans in the industry that feel they're being sidelined. We have a three-hour telecast. Mm -hmm. Under those parameters where you want musical performances, mm -hmm. where you want cl film clips, which we didn't have any of that last year, mm -hmm. something has to go. But let me share, there is precedent for this. The Tony Awards mm -hmm. do exactly this model. We are told that we will see the full speeches on the telecast. We just won't see the actual walk up to the stage. And I think more importantly here is that the Oscars really need to start coming to terms with what their core audience is. Mm -hmm. I said this a few weeks ago, look at the Super Bowl. Super Bowl can last two hours or six hours, but it's, all day, it's an all day event. Everyone watches, mm -hmm. they just need to model that. And this, I don't think this is the way. Yes, well, I agree with the artisans. I stand with them as is the industry that has been the outcry this week. You can't make a film without these individuals who are now essentially getting sidelined. And I understand that we will still see their speeches, but to make this announcement, it just basically makes it seem like you're less than the director or the actor, and that's not a good look. And of course, the Academy was just under fire for all this back and forth with their vaccinations at the Oscars. I mean, there's just so much information coming out, so we will see what happens. But let's move on to another big story from this week. The end of a television era has come. Wendy Williams' show is officially coming to an end, and Sherry Shepard is going to get her own show come this fall. Now, this is a really big deal. I mean, Wendy Williams is one of a kind. There will never be someone like her again. She has done what no one else has been able to do. And as you know, and I think as a lot of our viewers know, I am a friend to The Wendy Show. I have been on her show for years as a guest, breaking down entertainment stories on Inside Scoop for Variety. So this is something that I am quite close to. I've gotten to know Wendy. I've gotten to know her team. Now, first of all, I want to say I'm very glad to report that her whole production team and the crew is going over with Sherry. So that's the most important thing, that they all keep their jobs. They're one of the best in the business. But, you know, this is really, for me, a sad turn of events. First of all, it's a huge loss for television. But also, everyone, we just want Wendy to be okay. We want to be able to hear directly from her. She's been battling health issues. She suffers from Graves' disease. But I think that all of her fans are certainly just waiting to hear from her so we can get a full picture of what's really going on there. Yes, yeah, she is a staple in the industry. And yes, yeah, she is such a, a figure in that space. I just really hope that we get to see her again. And this isn't the end of Wendy Williams in general, that, you know, this may be end of a chapter and the, the next one will be just as exciting. Couldn't agree with you anymore. Of course, her health and her recovery is the most important. But if and when Wendy is ready to come back, we will all be waiting. But I think I'm going to really miss seeing her because we're never going to see someone again who's unpolished, who can like pick their nose and pick their yeah. hair and make it work on TV. That doesn't happen. And she made it happen. I can't wait to hear what that deal is going to sound like. And speaking of deals, there were a lot of Hollywood deals this week, starting with Apple, the streamer, closing in on a deal on Skydance, the production company that's in charge of multi-million dollar franchises such as Mission Impossible and the upcoming Top Gun Maverick sequel. They will live together under the same roof. Warner Media and Discovery are expected to close in on their deal in the middle of April. And then lastly, which is one of the best ones, Britney Spears lands a landmark deal reported $15 million for a tell-all book I can't wait to read. 
a lot of money's flying around uh, Hollywood <laughs> these days. I mean, the the, the housing industry is booming, <laughs> right? I mean, everyone's just throwing stuff in the air. But like, listen, the Britney deal, I'm excited for that, especially coming off the heels of her sister's book, whatever. You know, we're, we're going to see exactly what Britney's side of the story is. But the Apple Skydance deal is going to be huge for the streamer. Mm -hmm. And then Warner Media. The first thing on their agenda, new logo. Don't like that logo. We need something new. <laughs> That's true. But I mean, this is going to be one of the biggest mergers, uh, as you said, expected to close in April. And actually this week on an earnings call for Discovery, CEO David Zaslov, he was asked about the spending spree and the streaming wars because we hear billions of dollars flying around at places like Netflix. And David Zaslov, he said, you know, we already spend a lot of money. We spent billions of dollars last year on content, but we are not going to spend just to spend. They want to keep it measured. Also revealed on the earnings call was that Discovery now has 22 million paid subscribers for their streaming offerings. Obviously, when you uh, merge that with Warner Media, which has HBO, HBO Max, it's just going to be a huge conglomerate. We're seeing all these companies come together. It's a little scary for some reasons, but yeah. certainly going to be a powerhouse for content. And of course, we're all keeping our eye on CNN Plus because mm. with Jeff Zucker leaving recently, a lot remains to be seen there. What will happen when CNN comes under this new umbrella? And as you said, of course, the biggest deal of the week. We're talking about, you know, all these major media mergers, but Britney Spears, of course, the biggest with her book. Uh, yeah. I'm kidding, but I did speak to sources that are close to the pop star. They did confirm that this is going to be a tell-all memoir, not just about the conservatorship and sharing her side of the story, but also her upbringing, her family, and her rise to fame. Now let's talk about another huge star. Tom Holland continues to dominate Hollywood as if he hadn't already. He has officially achieved leading man status. He not only is of course the star of Spider-Man, but also Uncharted, which has exceeded box office expectations and is leading the box office. So first let's talk about Spider-Man. First of all, that film has crossed $1.8 billion at the worldwide box office. Yeah, it's a small thing. That's all right. Yeah. yeah. But also this week, Tom Holland, along with Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield, they recreated the infamous meme. Yes, exactly. And of course, it went viral. How could it not? But let's also talk about Tom Holland's latest movie, which I think leads him into potentially another franchise. Uncharted, it's based off of the video game series. Oftentimes, adaptations of video games don't do well, but this has exceeded expectations. It's topping the box office. And this has officially secured him as leading man status. Now, how I feel like you know you've made it is when you're co-starring with Mark Wahlberg, but people call it the Tom Holland movie. Mm -hmm. That's how you know that you're officially on the A-list. And this really just means that Tom Holland's going to be able to command whatever he wants in Hollywood, and he'll be at the top of every studio's wish list. I think what this also signals to Hollywood that people will go to the movies mm -hmm. for the projects that they really want to and for the stars they really want to see. So this really brings about a question like, are the movies really back? And mm -hmm. how will this affect the Batman, which is opening next weekend, because Robert Pattinson, also a huge name. Mm -hmm. So I want to see if that has just as uh, much success as Tom Holland has had. I hope it does. I can't wait to see it. I know you've already seen it. I'm very jealous, and I know you can't say anything. So I guess that's a wrap, huh? Yeah, that, well, <laughs> yeah, that is a wrap on that, but it's going to be encouraging to see. But we do want to say at home, we do send our hearts and love and prayers to the people of Ukraine and everyone in that region. We pray for peace, and just our hearts are with you all. Thank you so much for saying that, Clayton. And thank you all for always joining us right here on The Take. And as always, we'll see you next Friday. Thanks for watching.